Hello there, you're watching News at 10 on Rajya Sabha Television. My name is Ashwarya Kapoor and here are the top stories that we are tracking for you at the top of this hour. Election Commission says it would be logistically equipped by September 2018 to hold simultaneous polls for Lok Sabha and Assemblies to get a 40 lakh VVPAT machines by then. India and Djibouti join hands to eradicate menace of terrorism. President Ramnath Kovind reaches Ethiopia on the second leg of Africa tour. Prime Minister Narendra Modi answers critics, says government committed to reverse slowdown. Reminds GDP has not fallen to 5.76% for the first time. And Sanya Mirza and Rohan Bopanna enter quarterfinals of women's and men's doubles match at China Open. Our top story, the Election Commission has said that it would be logistically equipped by September 2018 to hold simultaneous polls for Lok Sabha and Assemblies. The announcement by the poll panel came days after it issued a formal direction that the paper trail machines will be used in all future elections where polls are held using EVMs. Now speaking in Bhopal, Election Commissioner O.P. Rawat said that in response to the centre's query on what it would require for becoming uh, capable of holding simultaneous polls, the panel asked for funds to purchase new EVMs and VVPAT machines. The poll panel also said that it has already placed the order for the purchase of new EVMs and VVPAT machines after receiving funds from the centre. He said that the poll body would get 40 lakh VVPAT machines by September 2018. <laughs> सरकार ने इलेक्शन कमीशन को उपलब्ध करा दी हम लोगों ने ऑर्डर्स मैन्युफैक्चरर्स पर प्लेस कर दिए और डिलीवरीज भी शुरू हो गई हैं सारी डिलीवरीज कंप्लीट हो जाएंगी सितंबर 18 तक इसलिए इलेक्शन कमीशन के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से हम लोग सितंबर 18 के बाद सक्षम होंगे कि हम साइमल्टेनियस इलेक्शन डिलीवर कर सकें लेकिन जो अमेंडमेंट्स और दूसरी चीजों की बात है वो हमारे से संबंध नहीं है वो सरकार से संबंध है on to the other top story of the day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has hit out at the critics over GDP growth figures that slipped in the April to June quarter. He said that a handful of people are working to weaken the reputation and honest social structure in the country. While saying that not everything that the critics are saying is wrong, he said that his government is committed to taking firm measures to strengthen the economy. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has assured that India's economy is on a firm footing and that the government will not stake the country's future for immediate gains. Inaugurating the Golden Jubilee Year celebrations of the Institute of Company Secretaries of India, the Prime Minister said the government is committed to reversing the falling growth rate. <laughs> सेवन पॉइंट फाइव प्रतिशत की औसत ग्रोथ हासिल करने के बाद इस वर्ष अप्रैल जून की तिमाही में जीडीपी ग्रोथ में कमी दर्ज की गई है हम इसका इनकार नहीं करते लेकिन ये बात भी उतनी सही है कि सरकार इस ट्रेंड को रिवर्स करने के लिए पूरी तरह से प्रतिबद्ध है क्षमतावान है हम फैसले लेने के लिए तैयार है the Prime Minister also said he has asked the GST Council to identify bottlenecks and technological hurdles faced by businesses, especially small and medium enterprises. He also said that his government has the courage to take bold decisions like demonetization and implementation of GST, which the previous government lacked. ये सरकार के अथक परिश्रम का ही परिणाम है कि आज देश की अर्थव्यवस्था कम कैश के साथ चल रही है डीपोलराइजेशन के बाद कैश टू जीडीपी रेशियो अब 9% आ गया है 9% आ गया है 
while saying that the center will graciously accept criticism on the economic front and will make amends wherever necessary the prime minister said that while his critics were seeing slowdown in the last two quarters they were ignoring the fact that the bjp government has brought down inflation from 10% in the upa regime to 2.5% shrunk current account deficit to nearly 1% from 4% and brought down fiscal deficit to 3.5% from 4.5%. साथियों क्या आपको लगता है कि ऐसा पहली बार हुआ है कि देश में GDP की ग्रोथ किसी तिमाही में 5.7% तक पहुंची है? क्या पहली बार हुआ है क्या? पिछली सरकार में छह साल में आठ बार ऐसे मौके आए जब विकास दर 5.7 प्रतिशत या उससे नीचे गिरी थी। Quoting the RBI, the Prime Minister said the growth is expected to improve to 7.7 percent in the last quarter of the fiscal. The Prime Minister also credited the BJP government with pulling India out of the fragile five group and making it the fastest growing economy for most part of its three-year rule. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And the centre has urged the state governments to reduce VAT on petrol and diesel by 5%. The move aims to provide more relief to the consumers. Addressing the media in New Delhi, Petroleum Minister Dharmendra Pradhan said that the states are ultimate beneficiary of taxes uh, that are levied on petrol and diesel and they should take responsibility like the central government in the interest of the consumers. Pradhan also asserted that the finance ministry will write to all the states on slashing a VAT levied on the two products. Finance minister Arun Jaitley, who is on a visit to Bangladesh, also urged the states to cut the VAT on petrol and diesel to provide further relief to consumers from high fuel prices. Jaitley said that the two rupees per litre cut in excise duty on petrol and diesel was done to give relief from relentless increase in prices. राज्यों के अपने अपने कमिटमेंट और स्पेंडिंग स्ट्रक्चर है उसके बावजूद हम उम्मीद करते हैं कि सारे राज्य कॉटन नागरिक पार्टी लाइन इस बात को रिस्पांस देंगे और सब टैक्स भेंट घटाएंगे ऐसा हमारा पूरा उम्मीद है And the Reserve Bank of India kept the repo rate unchanged in its fourth bi-monthly policy for the financial year 2017-18 on Wednesday the RBI has also cut the economic growth forecast for the current fiscal to 6.7% from the earlier projections of 7.3%. Here are the details. The central bank provided no respite to loan borrowers ahead of the festive season. The RBI monetary policy panel voted to retain status quo. The repo rate or the rate at which the RBI lends to the banks has been retained at 6% and the cash reserve ratio, the amount of deposits banks park with RBI, was kept unchanged at 4%. The Apex Bank also raised inflation projection to 4.2 to 4.6% for the second half of the current fiscal due to firming global oil prices and uncertainty on the tariff crop output. MPC reviewed uh, current and evolving macroeconomic and financial conditions and decided to keep the policy rate uh, unchanged at 6% while maintaining a neutral monetary policy stance. Uh, this was by a majority of 5 to 1. The MPC reiterated its commitment to keep headline inflation close to 4%. We expressed concern about the loss of momentum of growth in the early months of 2017-18 the RBI also said that the implementation of GST adversely impacted manufacturing and may delay investment revival. Industry chambers had pitched for a rate cut to propel private investments to provide a booster shot to the economy. The concern on the top is the employment that is not being generated. and uh, So the industry was extremely hopeful that the RBI will be uh, focusing on more on growth rather than uh, only simply containing the uh, inflation. Unfortunately, our growth, the industrial production, is less than 
एक्सपोर्ट्स बढ़ नहीं रहे हैं जिस तादाद में बढ़ने चाहिए थे एम्प्लॉयमेंट पर इसका काफ़ी बड़ा असर पड़ा है लेकिन आरबीआई ने मैं समझता हूं कि उन्होंने इसका अपना ध्यान जो है वो केंद्रित किया है कि किसी प्रकार से इन्फ्लेशन को रोका जाए किसी हद तक वो भी ठीक है कि भाई जब इनकम लोगों की बढ़ नहीं रही है तो इन्फ्लेशन अगर उनके ऊपर ज़्यादा पड़ेगा तो उनके ऊपर दोरी मार हो जाएगी दी आर बी आई अंडरलाइन दैट दी रिसेंट स्ट्रक्चरल रिफॉर्म आर इम्प्रूविंग बिजनेस एनवायरमेंट ट्रांसपेरेंसी एंड इंक्रीजिंग फॉर्मलाइजेशन ऑफ द इकोनॉमी इट हावर कॉशन दैट कंसर्टेड एफर्ट्स आर नीडेड टू री स्टार्ट स्टॉल्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट द सेंट्रल बैंक ऑल्सो स्टेटेड दैट इट विल कंटिन्यू टू वर्क टूवर्ड्स रेजोल्यूशन ऑफ स्ट्रेस्ड एसेट्स इन बैंक्स Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha Television. And President Ramnath Kovind arrived in Addis Ababa for a two-day official visit to Ethiopia. He is the first president to visit the country in over 45 years. President Malatu Teshom and other top government officials welcomed President Kovind upon his arrival at Abol International Airport. During his stay, the president is expected to discuss bilateral and multilateral issues that will enhance relations between the two countries. India's relationship with Africa has been growing since the Indo-African Summit in 2015 in Delhi, which saw the participation of more than 40 African leaders. The President Ramnath Kovind also addressed the Indian community in Addis Ababa. He hailed them for earning respect for their country in Ethiopia by contributing in nation building. and creating economic opportunities he also praised them for popularizing ayurveda and yoga Now, referring to operation rahat th that evacuated indians from war torn yemen he reiterated that the current government is the one that cares for its citizens to our indian community here i assure you that we will be there behind you to hold and support you when you need us beat operation rahat beat operation rahat are providing help to people in libya or usa we have kept our promise ours is a government that cares a government that provides with india's growing stature and recognition come greater expectations and responsibilities we want to do more as a development partner for ethiopia you can be a critical connect between the two countries in this event in this endeavor and earlier during a president ramnath kovind's visit to djibouti india and djibouti signed an agreement to establish a regular foreign office level consultations The agreement was signed after President Kovind and his Djiboutian counterpart Omar Gwele held talks. Here is a report. On a two-day visit to Djibouti, President Ramnath Kovind had a summit-level meeting with his counterpart Ismail Omar Gwele. An agreement to streamline regular foreign office talks was signed in the presence of both leaders. President Kovind urged the Djibouti president to ratify membership of International Solar Alliance by the country's parliament. Djibouti is a founding member of the Solar Alliance launched by His Excellency Prime Minister Modi you know last year. Djibouti is the founder member of International Solar Alliance along with India and France. This no doubt indicates Djibouti's desire to chart its own independent path even as China and the US are not part of the alliance. Djibouti has shown itself as a friend of India by coming to its aid to evacuate Indians trapped in war zones of Yemen. president uh, appreciated the help that was given to uh, indians who were uh, caught up in the war zone in yemen in the rescue effort uh, in rahat uh, operation and uh, also uh, invited the president uh, on behalf of government of india to attend the solar alliance summit that is going to be held in india uh, in december 2017 Djibouti is important for India because of Chinese military base. At the time of the Doklam standoff, China tried to showcase its military powers from there. India wants to persuade Djibouti not to allow its soil to be used for provocative activities. Djibouti is alive to Indian sensitivities which was seen in the way Prime Minister Abdul Qadir Kamil Mohammad received President Kovid in a warm ceremonial welcome.
अखिलेश सुमन रिपोर्ट फॉर राज्य सभा टीवी And Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu inaugurated the World Space Week on Wednesday at the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Hari Kota in Andhra Pradesh. Vice President said that ISRO has been achieving good results by taking up a space research at its lowest cost compared to other countries. He also recalled the contributions made by scientists like Satish Dhawan and Dr APJ Abdul Kalam. Since the baby steps with the launch of first sounding rocket from tumba equatorial rocket launch station in 1963 and the first satellite aryabhatta in 1975 india has made giant strides and has emerged today as one of the leading space faring nations thanks to the visionaries like professor vikram sarabhai professor satish dhawan and former president great son of this country dr apj abdul kalam Vice President Naidu also addressed the 49th convocation of the Acharya NG Ranga Agriculture University in Nellore addressing the event he said that increased production and efficient distribution of food grains can move our country forward to achieve the goal of a zero hunger and adequate nutrition for all Andhra Pradesh governor and chancellor of uh, Angrao ESL Narsimhan and state agriculture minister Somi Reddy Chandra Mohan Reddy were also present on the occasion You cannot have an imported food security. You must have a homegrown food security. That is the principle one has to understand very clearly. Not only scientists, but also the rulers, the planners, and also the farmers. They should all understand with the growing population and with the changing food habits, and with also improving economy. The intake is increasing. The demand also is increasing, and the production also has to adequately increase. And Lok Sabha Speaker Sumitra Mahajan on Wednesday said that the SARC countries should join hands to make the region an abode of progress and prosperity. She also called for a collective front in the Southeast Asian region, saying that it is imperative for the global success of sustainable development goals. Addressing the eighth conference of the Association of SARC Speakers and Parliamentarians in Colombo, she said that the SDGs should be implemented in this region before any other place. as this geographical area held the key to fulfillment of these goals elsewhere she also said that india had sincerely chosen the path of removing poverty by empowering the poor mahajan also said that the oversight and legislative function of national parliaments must be further strengthened to implement the sustainable development goals that are part of the 2030 agenda And the government has decided to rename Gujarat's Kandla port as the Deen Dayal Upadhyay port. The decision, effective immediately, was taken at a union cabinet meeting in New Delhi yesterday. The union cabinet was also apprised of a memorandum of understanding signed by the Railways Ministry with Switzerland that will help the two countries to develop a tilting trains. The MOU signed on 31st of August this year. will enable technical cooperation in areas like traction rolling stock emu and train sets traction propulsion equipment and freight and passenger cars the cabinet also approved the ratification of the extradition treaty between india and lithuania it will provide for a mutual legal framework to deport terrorists economic offenders and other criminals now besides this the union cabinet gave ex post facto approval to an mou between india and myanmar to upgrade the women's police training center at Myanmar and here is a quick uh, round up of more national news now in nationwide <music> president ramnath kovind has rejected a petition seeking disqualification of our pmla surendra singh as a law maker for allegedly holding office of profit after an opinion of the election commission The petition had alleged that Singh had been earning profit from the Public Works Department that is PWD of the Delhi government as well as from New Delhi Municipal Council. Rajneesh Kumar, managing director at the State Bank of India has been named as the new chairman of State Bank of India. Kumar will succeed incumbent chairperson Arundhati Bhattacharya whose tenure ends later this week. The appointments committee of the cabinet approved Kumar's appointment for 3 years from 7th of October.
The tourism ministry will organize a Paryatan Parv from today. The objective is to draw focus on the benefits of tourism, showcasing the cultural diversity of the country and reinforcing the principle of tourism. Tourism Minister K.J. Alphonse said that there is a considerable improvement in foreign tourist arrival in India and e-visa is playing a key role in this connection. News from Bangladesh now, a $4.5 billion agreement was signed in the presence of Finance Minister Arun Jaitley and his Bangladeshi counterpart AMA Mohit in Dhaka on Wednesday. Now, the credit agreement focuses on infrastructure and social sector development. The new Indian line of credit will fund 17 major projects in Bangladesh that include electricity, railroads, roads, shipping and ports. Bangladesh will pay an interest rate of 1% per year. It will have 20 years to pay back the loan with a grace period of 5 years. Jaitley said that India has stood by Bangladesh's attempt to develop and it will continue to do so in future as well. The agreement was announced during Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's visit to India in April this year. And the United States has expressed concern over the future of a Pakistan government and wants to ensure long-term stability in the country. The statement comes after a meeting between U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and Pakistan's Foreign Minister Khwaja Mohammad Asif, who is in the United States. The ties between the two nations are frayed after President Donald Trump accused Islamabad of sheltering terror groups. Pakistan's Foreign Minister has defended his country's role in the war against terrorism. Now, Rex Tillerson said that he sought to allay Pakistan's concern over President Trump's new South Asia policy. Later, a statement issued by Pakistan's embassy said that US and Pakistan shared a common desire for peace and stability in Afghanistan and the region at large. The Pakistan relation, it's, it's very, Pakistan relationship and the US relationship is extraordinarily important regionally and as we rolled out the South Asia strategy we spoke about it in a regional context and this is about the importance of Pakistan and Pakistan's long-term stability as well. We have concerns about the future of Pakistan's government too in terms of them we want their government to be stable, we want it to be peaceful and many of the same issues they're struggling with inside of Pakistan are our issues. It really is a regional approach and Pakistan is critical I think, to the long-term stability of the region. And after a bitterly contested independence referendum on Sunday, Catalonia's leader has uh, launched a strongly worded attack on the King of Spain for failing to heal the country's divisions. In a TV address from the headquarters of the Catalan government in Barcelona, Catalan President uh, Charles Puigmont said, that King Philip had missed an opportunity to mediate in the political and constitutional crisis that has engulfed the country. He accused the king of adopting the Spanish government's position. The comments came after King Philip VI in a TV television address on Tuesday said that Catalan leaders had acted outside the law for pressing ahead with their moves towards secession. Puigmont has demanded mediation and has indicated that Catalonia could declare independence next week. Catalonia is an autonomous region of Spain located in the northeastern part of the country. During the referendum held on Sunday, nearly 900 people were hurt as the police violently tried to enforce a court's order suspending the vote. Catalan officials say that 90% people voted in support of independence. Per això, el missatge que el cap de l'Estat va voler adreçar a una part de la població no el podem compartir ni acceptar. El rei fa seu el discurs i les polítiques del govern Rajoy que han estat catastròfiques en relació a Catalunya i ignora deliberadament els milions. En un quick round-up de més internacional, aquí és el World Rap. El rei de la Unió The Nepali Congress has decided to form a democratic alliance for the upcoming provincial and parliamentary elections. This in order to counter the Maoist party's alliance with the largest communist bloc. Nepali Congress leaders say that the unity of leftist forces is a threat to democracy. Nepal is set to hold provincial election on 26th of November and parliamentary elections on 5th of December.
Scientists Sir Jacques Dubochet, Joachim Frank and Richard Henderson have won the Nobel Prize for Chemistry for Cryo-Electron Microscopy. The three European-born scientists were awarded the prize for developing a new way to assemble precise the three-dimensional images of biological molecules like proteins, DNA and RNA. Their work has led to better understanding of viruses like Zika. Russia reduced oil production by 3,46,000 barrels per day in the month of September. This has been revealed by the country's energy minister. Alexander Novak told reporters that Moscow cut its oil production more than the agreed quota in the deal between OPEC and non-OPEC countries. In November 2016, OPEC agreed to reduce its production and in the following month, 11 non-OPEC countries also agreed to cut production. Russia joined with the cuts of its own of 3 lakh barrels per day. And the operator of Japan's Fukushima nuclear power plant has been given initial approval to restart reactors at another atomic facility. Japan's nuclear regulator approved an application from Tokyo Electric Power to restart two reactors at Kashiwazaki Kariwa, the world's biggest nuclear power plant. This marks the first step towards the firm's return to nuclear power generation more than six years after the March 2011 triple meltdown at Fukushima plant. And on to sports now, ace Indian tennis player Sanya Mirza and Rohan Bopanna have entered the quarterfinals of the women's and men's doubles match in the ongoing China Open. The pair of third-seeded Sanya Mirza and Peng Shuai defeated a Belgian and Dutch pair of Elisa Mertens and Demi Schurz, 7-5-6-2. In another game, the pair of Rohan Bopanna and Pablo Cuevas emerged victorious against the Chinese team of Mao Shingong and Zezang, 6-0-6-4. That's it in this edition of news. Thanks so much for watching.